What you should consider if you're going to swap your lead acid batteries with lithium iron phosphate batteries. I mean, changing nothing would be great. Guys, I did shoot this video in German language, so to translate it to English, I can't shoot all scenes again, so let's do a voiceover from now on. It sounds too good to be true to keep the existing charging equipment and alternator. So, is it too good to be true? Yes. I mean, it's too good to be true, so we can't keep it. No. I guess you be aware of the advantages already, that they are lighter, that they can be charged with a high current, they are much more resistant to cycling and a much larger part of the rated capacity can be used. So you know the advantages already. And actually they do not have many disadvantages. One reason why they do not have so many disadvantages is the built-in battery management system. This intelligence takes over the task uh, to care about, for example, the balancing, but it also protects the battery against uh, deep discharging, overcharging and sometimes even against short circuits. So. The disadvantages are therefore concealed by the BMS. The energy consumption of the BMS is very little. We are talking exclusively about ready-to-use lithium batteries. Of course, own batteries can also be built via cells, but this is not our topic today. Thinking of the BMS, you could get the idea to just apply a voltage like 14.5 volts to your battery and you expect of the BMS to shut down the battery after it is fully charged. However, you shouldn't do that. The BMS is not a charging unit even if it has some of these features. Let's take a look at the maybe most complicated part and this is the alternator. The alternator has a little regulator at its back side but this is a quite simple voltage regulator. It cre creates a stable voltage between 13.8 to 14.2 volts which is charging the lead acid battery without a charging curve. So it's just creating a stable voltage and the lead acid battery usually takes a high current at the beginning and then the inner resistance is going up so that um, the charging current of the alternator is going down. You could say that the um, alternator is just doing the middle part of a normal current voltage voltage regulation and this is okay for the alternator if the high current doesn't apply too long. There are two common ways to protect our alternator. One is a temperature regulation. This is the more complicated way. The other one is simply to reduce the possible current so that it doesn't need to deliver high current all the time and for that we use the battery to battery chargers. B2B. These chargers, they convert the voltage of the lead acid battery if the alternator is on. Sometimes they increase the voltage for, for lithium, this might be necessary, and they apply it to the lithium battery to charge them with a limited current, which saves our alternator. These B2B chargers can detect automatically if the alternator is on or you can connect D plus but we come to that. I went for a Votronic 12 12 30 so it's limited to 30 amps to protect the alternator and we solved charging our lithium battery while still charging our lead acid battery. 
Now let's talk about shore power. So in our case, 230 volts, maybe you have 110 volts. So you could keep your old charging equipment theoretically. So I had um, this charger for three independent batteries before, but it was not able to charge lithium. You could set it to AGM batteries. Take a look in your data sheet what voltage you shall apply to your lithium battery. However, I wasn't happy with that approach, so I decided to change also my charging equipment in this case. And I went for a Victron Blue Smart Charger IP22, which is quite nice and also quite cheap. However, I went for the version with one output only. The reason is that I decided not to charge my lead acid battery, so my starter battery, anymore on 230 volts because I don't think that this is necessary. If you own still a car with a combustion engine, do you have shore power for that car? I don't think so, because it's simply not necessary. Usually, especially on a camper van, you just have the starter motor connected, so there is not much drain and it is quickly recharged after a few minutes uh, after starting the engine. And on a sailboat, it's more or less the same. You just use the starter motor on the starter battery and after it is on, it's simply recharged. Now there is a simple idea. We keep the lead acid charger, we, we charge our lead acid battery and we use our B2B, which we bought anyway, to charge uh, the lithium battery. Sounds good, sounds easy. There might be one disadvantage and this is the lead acid battery charger. There is a high current usually if the lithium battery is still charged, even if the lead acid battery is full. So what voltage will it apply? On which phase is it currently? And the second issue is that when solar power is on, also the B2B would turn on and charge the lithium battery. So it's a little bit tricky and I don't like this approach, but it's possible. I recommend instead uh, to connect the D-plus alternator signal directly to the B2B so that it only is on if the alternator is on. Let's discuss the last point and this is solar power solar charging and I think there's not much of a trade-off. You need a charger which supports the charging curve of lithium. Why so? Because it is always on. So there is trickle charging uh, when the battery is full. You, you need a regulator or a charging regulator which supports lithium. My Votronic regulator also supports on a second output a low um, current for my starter battery, which is quite nice because my starter battery needs also trickle charging and I have no 230 volts anymore for it. So that's perfect with this low current to, to charge uh, on a second priority my lead acid battery. By the way, what is great on the B2B is it supports reverse charging. So if the lead acid battery is empty somehow and the lithium battery is full, it can uh, start uh, reverse charging. So with a little current, the lithium battery will charge the lead acid battery so that you're always on the safe side that your starter battery is ready to use. If you're interested in solar power and solar charging, I did a video especially um, how to connect the display of the Votronic to the Raspberry. I will set a link here. My conversion is done. I swapped my lead acid battery to a high 150 amp hours lithium battery. I kept my starter battery for the engine. And you know, everything I told you is uh, my, my opinion. Uh, you do everything on your own risk. I wish you all the best for uh, a conversion. If you like this video, give a thumb up and stay tuned. Thanks and goodbye.